Because I applied to a lot of universities, so I applied to 11 universities. I only got offers from three, so that's not a very good success rate. But yeah. So I applied to the master's program in bioinformatics. So what bioinformatics does is it combines bio uh, complex biological problems with solutions from computer science. So it's an interdisciplinary course. What attracted me to it was the sheer brilliance of the field because it talks, it uses computer science con concepts, which helps us process large amounts of data and apply them to real life biological situations, which will probably help in the alleviation of disease, public health, or simple analytics, which can help us plan better in the future. General requirements, the GRE, the TOEFL, the letters of recommendation, and a statement of purpose. Some programs might also require you to take a GRE subject test, but uh, that depends from program to program, really. Uh, there's no cutoff for GRE generally, but uh, so, GRE is generally only for a soft cutoff. So, generally, if you're above a certain GRE score, your application is considered for further evaluation. Then, your recommendations, your uh, CV, your research experience, all those things come towards the admission process. The NSID students can go virtually any to any course that they apply their mind to. So. You obviously have course related uh, programs, so for say computer science people there are like loads of programs in different specializations for biotechnology, electronics, any, every field in NSIT has a lot of related master's fields later on. Uh, so the first thing that I did was that I took, uh, I took a test to understand where I stand. Uh, based on that I created a strategy to you know kind of prepare myself for the actual exam. So what I find when I discuss with a lot of other friends who are also prepared for the GRE is that uh, people generally lack in the verbal ability section. So that is something that you will need to devote a lot of time to because you really can't brush up on your vocabulary in a very short amount of time. You will have to give some amount of time every day, learn a few words every day and apply them so that they get, they get ingra ingrained in your vocabulary and that you can you know recognize them and understand them better and use them better during your exam. On the kind of course that you're looking at. So the first thing that people generally do is that they look at US news ratings or QS rankings. That is something that you can do but after you do that you should look at probably say top 50, top 100 programs and then you should look at specific research programs that research labs that you're interested in if you're going for a research based course. If you're going for a professional course again the rankings matter a lot then you should look at previous employment records, you should look at uh, where current um, uh, potential opportunities for graduates there, what the current graduates are doing, what kind of scholarships are, well, are available, and different and the city which is the city is generally irrelevant. But if again you have lots of options and you feel that you will get through everywhere, the city. Is uh, so try working in different labs to explore your interests. Start early on so that you have more time to decide on what you want to do ultimately. And Approach professors, I think that's very important because professors have a world of experience that they're readily willing to share with you. So go and talk to your professors and try to understand what their viewpoint is. Of course, it's just a suggestion, but if you talk to enough people, you'll be able to form a well-educated uh, opinion. Sleep less and join lots of societies.